Good afternoon, everybody. First of all, thank you, Nikki and Tony, for the great program that has been worked on and, and, and everybody that is involved. I don't want to left anybody out. It's fantastic. And then when it's going to be like fully implement, I think you have a bright future and it's going to help the game. Thank you coaches and players and all the coaches that are here that are not referees to be here today. We need more of those discussions. Excellent. So great, great start. And I think it's a great idea to have it together like this. Um, I'm going to be very brief because I don't want to repeat the wonderful conversation we've had so far. I'm just going to try to add a few things to what we've been talking about. For those who don't know me, I've just, I ref few games in my life, so I have an idea a little bit of what is refereeing. And I also play and I also coach. So I think it's a tool for the referees also. If you have been all around in the game that you've played the game and you've coached, you feel the tackle when it happens, don't you? Right? You feel a little, bit, a little bit better because I played and I had some like injuries and tackle and I'm like, ouch. So when I'm a referee, I'm like, ouch as well. For the, I feel the pain for the players and the coaches. So it helped me a lot to do a better job. I'm, I'm convinced of that. It's not compulsory, but it, it does help. And I've seen a lot of international referees also that are at the highest level, never play the game in, the game in their life, and they're still very good because they understand the game and they respect the environment. Um, for me, the CPR approach and then the referees, I talked about it a little bit like this morning, but for the coaches that weren't there, it's coach, player, referee. What are we there for in a game? Like, what do you guys want at the end of the day? You want your player to perform, you want to win the game, you want to have no injury, right? You want to spare your players. You want to have a good performance and you want to like shine during this game, give all your heart to the field and finish the game without an injury and hopefully a win, right? Do you come to a game by saying, oh, number 10, I'm going to break his leg today. If you start a game like this, we have a problem. And in the referee, I am convinced also that they tackle every game to start the game by saying that I'm going to do my best today. And I'm hoping they do. And if they don't, it's the wrong attitude and we talked about this. Okay? But very important, the attitude. We're all there for the same reason and we want the same result. Finish the game, being happy and go home feeling satisfied of our performance. Same goal. So we have to work together. Uh, we have to re respect one another in each of our role. And for us in particular is to protect the players. I'm going to work, I'm going to tell you more a little bit about solutions. In every international tournament, for example, and in the Algarv Cup that is going there, before each tournament, I had a small session as being the person in charge of the referees. I had a small session with all the coach just to go over maybe some change. We're talking about half hour. Change in the laws of the games. Um, can we have the GPS? Answer question of coach or players or technical people or representative of the team that came to the opening meeting before the tournament. Clarify a few things and then it was a way to help the referees to do their job. Avoid a ton of question from the coach and the players to each of the referee after each match. And that was clarifying a few things in no time to start on a good note. So that's a quick solution to do. And then I, I kept telling to the coach and the players, uh, please, if you have something, don't get onto the referees like during the match. It won't go anywhere. Come to me and I will help you to find a solution. I will explain the law because I have the time sitting in this stand, I will take the time to do it. It was really interesting because this morning we talked about players and coaches and captain asking the referees question. The referees, just to be clear, um, the, for 90 minutes, there's a million decisions and million things to look at. There's not much time to answer question and to, reply, or to uh, explain the laws of the game. However, what I told them, it has to be respectful. You cannot be arrogant. You cannot say, I don't want to answer you. You have to say, sorry, sorry, like the ball's in play. I can't talk to you right now. I'll get back to you. And when the ball's out of play, if you have a few seconds to clarify a few things that would help the game, great. If you don't have time because the game is fast, do it at halftime or do it after the game. 
But I think we all have to understand that it's 15 minutes whistle to whistle at half time. If I take five minutes of my time out of those 15 minutes to explain law 11, I don't rest during that time. So it's not fair for me either, right? So if it's only a couple words, great. And then that's, I think, if this is an understanding, I think we can go far, okay? And if it's done with respect, I think we're also in a better situation. We talked about communication, performance, and respect. Again, the CPR. What is your um, number one goal? Is the performance of your team, of your players, of, of you know, uh, of the game? Well, it's the same for us. It's performance. Okay, and then this is this is also key for us. Um, you may not know, but like referees prepare for the match. At the highest level, there's also fitness tests, there's medical exam, um, uh, there's uh, tactical preparation, physical preparation. There's a lot of work behind done by the referees that like sometimes um, it's underestimated. There's a lot of commitment by the referee. And then often for not much money, right? So the, the, um, the, 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 the behavior and the mentality of, of the referees and the commitment is huge, is huge in preparation. And that, that's not uh, to take lightly. What we try to work on a little bit more in the modern game now is the football understanding. It's not just good enough now to know the laws of game, not good enough, and we said this morning, we need to manage 22 players, we need to manage the technical area, we need to manage even sometimes all the surrounding and the fans and the coaches and, and, and everybody else around it. So it's a very demanding 90 minutes in a match. But more the referee knows about your players, who are the key players, what's at stake in that game, at national championship. Whoa, I better be in shape, so I better go to bed early the night before. No alcohol, take it seriously. You know, and this is all part of like what the players at a high level should do as well. You know, so it's, it's important to have the package as an athlete. A referee is an athlete and must be an athlete to serve the game the best we can. Um, you know, really, it was just like a few slides. For me, it's, it's all the discussion that we've had for the last hour and a half or something. And then it it, you triggered so many things with, with, um, with the videos and we also believe part of the training to help the game is to see um, many, many, many videos and get consistency in our decision. That's why I was like, ah, you know, when we showed like yellow card, no card, it was all like, right? We had four different decisions and 30 people and it was like 24% of each decision. We didn't get consistency here. But maybe after reviewing the video, discussing the key point to analyze, then we, we, we will get consistency in the next call. And we do a lot of education like this, and then we want to do more. We now have practical session. We simulate what could happen in the game and we solve it. You know, and that's part of the, the education. Tony said it well, we will always have like some, some sort of like mistake. But if we work together, with respect, I think we're going to go far. And if there's something major, please report it. Don't yell at the referee for unnecessary reason. Um, and same with the parents. Report to Ontario Soccer, report to Canada Soccer. And I am like pretty convinced that some action will be taken. At least they will send an assessor for the next match and see for themselves, OK, we have a problem with this referee. And then maybe work on what's the problem. Right? And action will be taken because we want to look good as well. It's not good for us if it, the game is not going well. Right? So action will be taken. And then at the same time, if some referees are abused verbally or physically by being pushed by a coach or something like this, then it has to be reported. And then some of the authority will, will help maybe by just having a conversation and then find a solution to the game. And all this is for the benefit of the game. It's all, it's all words right now. I know when you're there and it's a World Cup game, trust me, it's a different story. We have the adrenaline to the roof and then uh, we react differently. But if we prepare for that pressure, everybody, we're going to react better when it happens. 
and that's part of the uh, education and, and, and the planning. I also believe that the appointment should be based on performance and not too much fast tracking, but to give to each referee the game that they're able to handle, right? And then if you progress normally, then you'll be able to deliver a good performance on the field. And when the referee is ready, they can get something a little bit more challenging. You know, and also this is quite important in the evolution. Um, any question? I think we've, we've killed the topic a little bit, eh? Like uh, in this period of time. Really good luck for the coaches. All the coaches are here um, for your season. And thank you everybody for your attention. Have a great weekend.